when I when I realized there was something called EBV, um, the frustrating part was that I was so well studied and I had the best trainings in the country and the best background in my profession, and yet that virus was never discussed anywhere. There's nothing. So uh, when I realized, like I was starting to look at the research, medical literature, and I realized what makes the virus tick, how you can turn it off. There's tons of literature. But what I realized was that what I had been teaching, my philosophy of what nutrition is, what wellness is, yeah. fit like a glove into what the virus doesn't like. Welcome to the Create Happy Now podcast, dedicated to helping you start your journey to discover true happiness. Join me, your host, Susan Blanton, weekly as we explore the transformation stories and words of wisdom from our Masters of Happiness with tips you can start applying today to create happy now. Hey, this is Susan Blanton with the Create Happy Now podcast, and today I have on my show Dr. Cassia Kynes. Dr. Kynes is the CEO and founder of the Global Epstein-Barr Virus Institute. She is a leader in recovery therapy for chronic EBV, author, wellness expert, a highly respected doctor of clinical nutrition, and a graduate of the prestigious Bastyr University. Since 2005, Dr. Kynes has built an international reputation as a functional nutritionist from being sought after by John Hopkins University to her groundbreaking Amazon bestseller book, The Epstein-Barr Solution. Dr. Kynes has developed an effective, proprietary, evidence-based methodology to EBV recovery and a successful EBV recovery program for those suffering from EBV. She also trains other practitioners in her methodology with her clinician EBV training and certification program and EBV practitioner workshop. Dr. Kynes is a passionate advocate for debunking common misinformation about EBV in the medical community and lectures on this topic extensively. She is on a mission to bring the truth about EBV and its solutions to a million people globally. So no one needs to suffer needlessly from this misunderstood virus and its complications. Dr. Kynes' passion is also to further interspecies telepathic communication and support the rise in vibrational frequency to promote higher consciousness and healing on the planet for all sentient beings. I just want to thank you, Dr. Kynes. Uh, for joining me. And I also want to thank you for writing this book, um, the Epstein. I don't know if it's going to show up with my virtual background here, but I'll try to make it look there. This is the book I read. It's the Epstein Bar Solution. And it is a Bible. It is a Bible. It's got everything you've ever want and needed. Um, to get through your journey with Epstein Barr virus, um, it's uh, it definitely is a, a lifesaver. It is a way of life that um, I think, uh, whether you've got Epstein Barr or not, <laughs> it's a great um, lifestyle to follow. Um, but I, you know, like I shared before, I I had this Epstein Barr last year. And, um, it took me to some depths of my being that, um, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to come out of, and your book was one of the first books that I pulled off the shelf. And I think I got it, well, it wasn't really on a shelf. I got it from Amazon and, um, poured through it, um, to just kind of get some answers. And it's very, very thorough. Um, I, I, I was just blown away. Um, I mean, how to read my labs even like, I, cause I, I got them like, Oh, what does, what does this mean? You know, like, okay, it's active or it's chronic or, you know, I didn't know how to, to, to read it. Um, and it shows you exactly, I mean, just everything that you need to know. Um, and so I, I guess I kind of wanted to start out with what led you to write this book about Epstein-Barr, like how did this come to be? Because this has had to have been 
a, a massive undertaking to write this book because it's just fabulous. I mean, you've got recipes, you've got everything that Epstein Barr can cause and uh, just uh, how to survive it and to, you know, just put it back in its little dorm itself. <laughs> Yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me here, Susan. And I'm sorry you had to be hit with this virus, but you did an amazing job. So it's very inspiring and you're already sharing that with others, which is more inspiring. So uh, that's amazing. Uh, well, the, the book wrote itself and it wrote itself within a year or a year and a half. It was pretty fast. And the reason is that when I, when I realized there was something called EBV, um, the frustrating part was that I was so well studied and I had the best trainings in the country and the best background in my profession, and yet that virus was never discussed anywhere. There's nothing. So uh, when I realized, like I was starting to look at the research, medical literature, and I realized what makes the virus tick, how you can turn it off. There's tons of literature. But what I realized was that what I had been teaching, my philosophy of what nutrition is, what wellness is, yeah. fit like a glove into what the virus does in life. Right. And this is the reason why I was able to write it so fast, because I, I had been I had been teaching these things. We had programs before, not focused on EBV because I didn't know it exists. Yeah, but people were turning around and you know reversing autoimmunity and this inflammation and you know now I I remember somebody used to have lupus and did my program it was a detox program uh, and you know turn turn that around and of course lupus is classic for me but I didn't know that and so so I had I I have millions of materials and, and years of experience of what I have created as a philosophy and as sustainable tools. And like you said, you don't have to have EBV to benefit from these ideas because this is how humans are wired. This is how we most benefit. This is the kind of life. And like you said, you don't have to have EBV to benefit from these ideas because this is how humans are wired. This is how we most benefit. This is the kind of lifestyle that is sustainable for us. Mm -hmm. And we're going further and further away from it. Environmentally, you know, the living quarters, the building materials, the mold exposure, the, the loss of nutrients and crops and so on and so forth. So it's like, ah, um, and that's where the virus likes to turn on. It's just such an opportunist mm -hmm. that is sustainable for us. Mm -hmm. And we're going further and further away from it environmentally, you know, the living quarters, the building materials, the mold exposure, the, the loss of nutrients and crops and so on and so forth. So it's like, ah, um, and that's where the virus likes to turn on. It's just such an opportunist. Mm -hmm. So, but to answer your question about how it started was, I had a very good friend in Poland. Um, we were at each other's, you know, we were each other's uh, best mates and when I moved to the States, half a year before I moved to the States, she ended up in ER with paralysis of half of her body. Oh my. And they diagnosed her out of the blue, completely, you know, out of the blue. You know, we had Chernobyl there. Yeah. Uh, we were in north of Poland, so a little bit further. But I was in the same location she was, so, you know, it's just, I don't, I don't know, we'll never know. But uh, they diagnosed her with MS and then um, uh, she fought it for, I think, 19 years. And so my immigration years paralleled with her amazing journey to try to fight it. She was the most loving and most funny person. Uh, just, you know, mm. and at a certain point she gave up Aww. and her, her son was afraid to tell me when he lost her. Aww. Uh, you know, I, I sent her a letter too late. I just wanted, I, I wrote her a letter with everything I wanted to tell her because I had uh, a lot of challenges in my life here in the States. So I couldn't go to Poland. I couldn't visit her. I couldn't. And I, and I was frustrated because she was deteriorating and fighting and I, I didn't have the tools to help her. I was already a clinical nutritionist, da, 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 you know, these things. But as, my, as I was building my life in the States, her life was shrinking. 
And so I was really uh, desolate after that and uh, frustrated. And I always ask the question, why did it have to happen to her? What was it? And yeah. the virus somewhere popped up to the point where I asked a medical intuitive that I trusted. I just asked her, can yeah. you just check with your knowledge and see if this virus had anything to do with it? And she said, yes. Wow. And, yeah. and so I've then, yeah. And then a couple of my patients actually individually asked me my opinion about medical medium. So, you know, it was a hot topic, just mm -hmm. came up. And so one, I could ignore and say, I don't have time, but three is like, okay. So I bought the book. I was flying to a conference because I don't have time to read. So I was on the plane I opened the book. Uh, no preconceived notions about it. I just opened and read. And I could have easily fallen off the chair because by that time, my practice was people who were kind of uh, dropouts of the medical system. They've seen medical doctors, functional doctors, MDs, nutritionists. They've seen, they had multiple labs. They've done everything yeah. that they were asked. And nobody could figure out all those kind of mystery problems of immunity. Mm -hmm. I was working a lot with SIBO. I was working a lot with Hashimoto's. And uh, never heard about the virus, but I do know that some of these people I couldn't help, even I couldn't help. So we would like hit the wall. It's like, what are we not seeing? Yeah. And so I always ask that question. I, I asked Marlena's question, my friend's question, why I couldn't help her. And then I started to read this book on the plane. And I was like, holy shit, pardon my language. These, these are the patients I couldn't help. This one, this this is exactly the story. So as I was reading, uh, you know, medical medium likes to go into extreme uh, claims. It's fine because it captures the audience. And I think that's a service, you know, he captured the world with a message. Yes. That's very important. There's a virus people, recognize it. And so I was thinking on the plane is 50% of this is true. I have something I have to do when I go back. <laughs> So basically that's what happened. I went back uh, after the conference and I started to study the lab testing. Once I cracked that exactly because it's such a mess. It is. <laughs> I started to look at the, you know, request the test and um, we started to see patterns. And then I just never stopped. I started to really pursue it aggressively because I, you know, I was on fire. Like this is, this is, this is, we, we just need to do it. And and the book, the book, um, I never intended to write any book. I was just practicing, you know, pulling out a lot from medical literature and starting to create protocols based on that. I was also lucky because in one, one module in my doctoral program, we had a component of virology with Dr. Vasos. Oh. Uh -huh. It's the only time he taught there. He, he was never hired again. <laughs> and I was in that class and we brushed, brushed, uh, you know, <clears throat> through viruses and EBV, not specifically, but I started to understand the viruses. And then that's all I needed to kind of jump in and tweak my protocol. And so, and so um, I just wrote a literature review of uh, EBV for my doctoral program. Mm -hmm. And then the people that read it were asking, where are you going to publish it? Where are you going to write the book? Including my husband, the director of the doctoral program. He's like, oh, <laughs> what book? I don't write books. I don't have a life. I have a busy practice. I'm a full, you know, full-time doctoral student. I am exhausted. I'm overworked. I've never written a book. <laughs> Uh, you did a fantastic job like you know well you know I just, was amazing the thing is the, the the I think the biggest reason for me to write is I had concerns that it was a hot topic that unscrupulous people will start writing and promoting stuff stuff that you need my job I felt was to balance the view because we have the medical media medium views that were extreme and simplified on one one end right 
And then I started to see, you know, people tricking over from what they were doing with him and telling me how it works or doesn't work. And I, I started to see where his gaps are because he's not a nutritionist. He doesn't teach people how to eat exactly during the day. Like, you know, it's sometimes a temporary, have, um, it's, it's a great awareness, but you know, people still should work with a professional clinician. Mm -hmm. And then you have the other extreme medical community who doesn't want to have anything to do with this kind of woo-woo stuff, right? Yeah. There was nothing here and we had millions of people. Like, yeah. You have three millions of reported mono cases a year in the States alone. That's just mono. Yeah. That's just what doctors recognize. It's many that's about the only thing that they recognize. That's the only thing they recognize, yes. Because so, I was told when I had when I had it and had my spleen removed, they're like, "Well, at least if you have it, you never have it again." <laughs> no, that's one of not the. That's true. One of the. Yep, that's a that's a medical myth. That is not not true. That is not factual. So you know, so I I I felt this huge responsibility, and I had Marlena kind of you know hovering over me. <laughs> making sure that I have the right teacher, that I have the right, you know, that I keep going. And so I was in a hurry because I saw the pain of my patients. I saw the devastation. I started to see how this virus destroys lives. And I said, like, nobody needs to die. She died. Yeah. Nobody needs to die. If I hurry and do it properly, I'll be the one doing it properly. So we have this the space for science, evidence, sustainability, and real tools. And without, lifestyle that yes, you can sustain. All, but all I had to write it once I had the protocols in place and I had predictable results in my practice. So that's kind of, you know, so, but once, once that happened, you know, I already was working, everything was there. So it was just a matter of having in enough white space so I could sit down and write. So I never had to think. I, every time I sat, it just wrote itself. It so I think flowed, it was, yeah. I think it was, I really feel like I'm a messenger. I'm the right person that was supposed to, I, I was offered this responsibility. I could take it or I could not take it. And I chose to take it consciously because I felt responsible and I wanted to do it right it's not a perfect book you know I still find typos which irritates the crap out of me but mm -hmm. you know but I the perfection is applied in EBV community and I chose to be imperfect and not worry about it and just focus on the fact that it will help people so I kept writing absolutely and and, and you know one of the reasons why I invited you is um again because this book is it is a map. It is a map mm -hmm. to get back, get your life back, mm -hmm. literally. I hope so. That's wonderful. Um, you know, my, I mean, not to discount Dr. Sloan, who I had on my last podcast. Um, thank God for him. Um, he did give me like a protocol of, you know, what to take. And, and I, I believe that had a lot to do with it, but it also is, you have to set an intention. You have to set an intention that you are going to get well. I mean, people. Um, for most people, for most people in our community, <clears throat> I can tell you what I see. I think you will relate. We all carry this virus. You may not know. I've had EBV twice in the last half year. First time in my life too. Uh, each time it lasted 48 hours, I knew what to do. I turned it off, mm -hmm. but it takes the awareness in our community. Oof, how do I say it? People with EBV that get hit with it are like canaries in the mind. These are the most uh, sensitive spiritual beings, empathetic individuals mm -hmm. who are overgiving over, you know, they're overexposed to toxins, to radiation, to, you know, Wi-Fi. Yes. They, they are very sensitive to that. The virus is sensitive to that, but in that community, it's really super sensitive, sensitive to negative energy, sensitive to the boss's negative sentence. Um, these are artists, these are givers, these are healers. And so with that comes 
a whole lot of crap from ancestral uh, trauma, personal trauma, mm -hmm. uh, losses, grief. And then when you start getting sick over years, there's also grief of losing your, your livelihood or who you were, like you said, yes. and losing the person that you used to be. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the trickling uh, negativity and abyss of losing your morale, you losing yourself, losing um, the spark and the belief. It's very deep. It, it, it is. It is, is totally, um, I think there's, First of all, I was depressed mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't have anything to be depressed about. Um, yeah, depression, anxiety. Yeah, but also, also. Um, I was overdoing it at the time. I, I was probably doing too much. And so even good stress is, bingo. can, can, can so, do it too. <laughs> one of the things that I have to teach our community in particular is there's a there's an ingenious uh, checklist of changes in your lives because stress we perceive stress as too much of the bad stuff, but if you you get married you elope and then you publish a book and and then you win a scholarship and then you sell a house and buy a house and get married and get a baby uh, and this forget is to where, take care of yourself <laughs> yeah because it's too many changes well, you know. Uh, I always say if you have an animal companion, you know how driven they are by routine. Mm -hmm. Our brain is the same. Our body is the same. We need routine predictability. Change is good, but in moderation. Yeah. And so, and the people with EBV, they have overdone it. It's a tough teacher. It's a recognition you're pushing too hard. One of the fam famous or infamous or favorite sayings that I hear almost every day. I just push through it. I push through it. I push through it. Yeah, you push into EBV. That's what you do. And because and the, the chemicals, the, the virus is very predictable. It responds to chemicals of stress, adrenaline, and cortisol. Mm -hmm. Good luck to us. And, and, and I'm telling you, this whole past year that I went through it, I've been very careful to add things back onto my plate. I mean, it's almost like a little PSD. I didn't want to get overwhelmed again, you mm -hmm. know? And so I've been very slow. I do what I feel like I can do. And I've, I've, one thing that I'm very blessed that I went through it is that I learned about myself more. I learned to be more kind to myself, be more patient. I can't do the dishes today. That's okay. It'll be there tomorrow. Um, I did start saying no a lot. I was usually a very, I was a yes girl. Oh, hey, can you do this? Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, can you do this? Yeah, sure. You know, I was a people yeah, pleaser. That's, that's uh, exactly the point. I'll do it all. Let's see how many things I can juggle. And, you know, and then I was like, mm -mm. I mean, all of my balls fell. And I, I was just like, you know, hey, can you, no. Oh, I, well, I, I, I stuck up a lot of boundaries. I'm like, no, I, I, I'll do it if I feel like it. If I don't, I'm not. And I gradually added things back in. And then if I felt, yeah, well, that was a little bit too much. Let me back off instead of, I, nope, yeah. I'm going to push through. I'm going to do it anyway. I should do this. I have to do that. <sighs> you know, and I stopped doing that altogether. Altogether. Yeah. That's, that's exactly, you know, that's the teaching that the virus provides. It's a, in a way, it's a, it's a great boundary setter. And, you know, I, once you go through this, you kind of know what your symptoms are. You can anticipate when the sim symptoms may start coming because of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. You can anticipate. It's very easy. We have a whole laundry list of yeah, checklist of triggers. <laughs> Why don't you yeah. go through some of those? Because I think a lot of people out there don't realize that this is way more common um, yeah. than, and, and that you don't have to live with, because some of it might be a little bit mild, like it might just show up as like menopausal symptoms, or, I mean, I turned 50 and I was like, holy crap, like I turned 50 and then all of a sudden I just feel like, like like I can't walk. I'm like, just 
I get out of bed and I can't even go to the bathroom without limping. I'm like, what's wrong? You know? Right. Um, and, and looking back, it was kind of EBV starting to rise thought, its head yeah. and then it, it just came to a head last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would have good days, bad days, but I was like, oh, crap, you know, and I'd live the rest of my life then this way. And then I didn't realize it was the virus all this time. Yeah. Yeah. So can you go through some of the, like, symptoms that the people triggers, might have and the triggers symptoms vary symptoms can be very you know traditional symptoms are uh brain fog and very heavy fatigue like very very heavy fatigue so people think they have cognitive decline they can't you know finish up sentence they don't know what they were saying or doing um they can't process information sometimes there's pain unexplained pain lymph nodes involvement sometimes you have ataxia or if depending where the brain is it could be Hashimoto's if it's uh, in thyroid you had your spleen problem it could be in liver as well connective tissue uh, in the brain ataxia vertigo that's what happened to me I developed vertigo mm -hmm. um, uh, the the ear buzzing or ringing uh, and the laundry list goes on and on. Uh, rashes, headaches, 75% uh, manifest with headaches. People don't realize that. So mm -hmm. um, rashes. Rashes, yeah. We have we have like we have this database website that is all evidence-based called EBV H E L P, EBV Health. Okay. Very simple. EBV Health. Nice. That's exactly what it Easy is. To remember. Yeah, we have a page for diagnosis, the medical conditions with PubMed links. We have symptom list. It's not all list. I mean, there's more and more and more and more and more, but it's, it's a lot. And I would say the best thing would be if people go to that website and click on the quiz. Oh, you have a um, quiz. That's you nice. did the quiz? No, I, oh. I, no. But I was like, you have a quiz? <laughs> yeah, there's, it's very it's very it's very quick but it's very specific mm -hmm. because i have a laundry list of symptoms and then another list of autoimmunity and another of cancer and another like of inflammatory conditions and so you kind of rate yourself and then i have a video a video walking people through what does it mean in your past or in your future so kind of mapping out zooming in and zooming out understanding if your life is impacted by this virus depending on the results and then we mm -hmm. have email with specific results and recommendations so it's really like That's amazing it's really really good i just redid this video a few days ago i'm so excited super gigged about it super gigged. it's so good so if anybody like is questioning not sure go it's free and just just uh, do it it's very quick actually but as you're going through the list you know there's more to the list that I mentioned. Uh, it's an eye opener. You starting connecting, like when you were reading the book, you probably started to connect the dots over your life. Like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, this happened, this happened now, I can see. So this quiz is like a quick way into that, what the virus is and if it's part of your life. So I, I would rec recommend that. You asked me about triggering events. Yeah, uh, there's a big laundry list as well. <laughs> That's why I'm saying it can hit anybody, you know, like this uh, needs to be, you need to know about this virus because it's yeah. a very old virus and 95% of the world's population has been exposed to it. Yeah, you to know? the point where uh, um, it's part of the herpes virus, right? They're working on a vaccination right now because it's had such a global thing. So I would say, um, what would I say? <laughs> I could say uh, the wow. virus will, the virus thrives in stress. So like you said, you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel guilty when you get it because even astronauts in space Prophylactically, I talked to a NASA scientist who told me that prophylactically they get prescription antiviral oh. medication because they, you know, we have studies that they have a higher risk of reactivation. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's very stressful physiologically, you know, you don't any have virus it. for that matter. Any, any virus. virus, but this is really the worst because it yeah. can impact you. So, so we're competing with the cream of the cream. And so it's a tough virus. However, it's very easy to turn it off and yeah. easier than people think. And that's why 
yeah. I was in a position when I could turn it off in two days each time. Yeah. yeah. And I knew exactly why I reactivated. Mm -hmm. I had, I don't remember men mono. I, I don't think I've ever really had <clears throat> full reactivation. It's a, it's a long story, but so that's that my goal is to teach people that they can be independent, sustainable. And once they understand the virus and their story and do the protocol and heal and recover, then the last piece is the uh, triggering effects, preventing re re uh, reactivation and, and turning it off within 48 hours. And that gives you complete independence and empowerment. So people no longer uh, are afraid. Oh, I'm going to get cancer. Oh, I'm going to get this. Oh, I'm going to get autoimmunity. No, you don't have to. No, and and you know, I was on a Facebook group uh, for a while, and there was a lot of people that were like, "I, I I'm on disability now," mm -hmm. and I was like, "What? This yeah. is what I like? I, no, I have things to do. I can't be on disability." And then I was like, "Oh, it, it can it can turn into." ms and cancer and this and this and i was like no 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 i i i can't i this is not going to be my future i am i am not going I, i'm going to fight this i'm going to put it back I, I it's once you have it you have it it's just like chicken pox you know can come back as shingles right uh, you know as an example um but i i was like no i'm going to i'm going to keep this you know put it back in its dormant state. Um, it took a year. I mean, now that, that I know, I mean, I felt pretty, a lot better. I wasn't completely back to normal, but I felt a lot better after maybe three or four months, but I still had to take it very easy. I didn't add everything back on my plate, but I did feel like I could at least do things. You know, I mean, I was at a point when it was at its worst, I couldn't even think about emptying the dishwasher and filling it the same day. I couldn't yeah. even imagine how people did it. How it, you it, it yeah. How Isn't that something? It's, yeah. yeah. Like it's very, it's impossible to describe, like, especially to a spouse. Yeah. The, 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 the degree of fatigue. It's like, they, they can't understand that. Yeah. You said that in your book, um, where, you know, you, they don't understand how you feel because you don't look sick. You, you don't, don't have sick, a, you're not acting sick. You don't have the, you know, that it's not like, bleeding, yeah. you know, <laughs> like you don't have the fever. You, you just are wiped out. Like just, I can't do it. And I, I had trouble like someone texting me. I'm like, Oh, I just can't even, I, you know, I didn't want to do Facebook. I, I, I have a Facebook group for create happy. Now I didn't want to post. I didn't have the wherewithal energy or care to do it. I had to stop my podcast for a year because I just didn't, I got it down to once a month because I just felt like I had to keep going. I had that, you know, had to, but mm -hmm. after a while, it's just like, okay, I gotta be, I gotta take my, I gotta put myself first. Mm -hmm. And, and that's when the healing really started is when I started to take care of me and love myself and give myself boundaries and not say yes to everything. And, uh, yeah, I had to say no a lot and, and disappoint people who used to you saying yes all the time. I'm like, no, no, no. Um, and uh it's just recently that I have felt like I'm I'm normal like I can go back and exercise and not just feel like that's gonna put me back um right that's you know, good because I have that's tried good. exercising and going and it would just wipe me out for a week I'm like well I guess right. I that yeah yeah there's there's specific forms of movements that are important mm -hmm specifically for EBV, but running is not one of them. No, no, I haven't soon found that out. Um, so tell us about that. Tell us, um, so there's a lot of things I incorporated into my lifestyle uh, that are in your book. Um, lymphatic um, 
circulation. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we have a lymphatic system, but no heart to pump it. So we have to in, you know, pump it ourselves. But the way you have to do that is to get moving. Well, um, shake you know, your booty. So I, got, <laughs> so I got a trampoline, a rebounder, um, and did some dry brushing. And I think that, you know, helped a lot. Yeah. Um, Excellent. And uh, just getting outside and getting vitamin D um, was, it was huge. Just to get out, just even if it just go out and sit on my front steps, you know, just to be out in, in nature. Um, and, it, and it definitely was about food. And I think that's an, another thing that um, I wanted you to share. So, so what are some examples of people that had come to you that have, uh, were just really suffering um, that, that turned them around? And, and what is your protocol when you notice, oh gosh, you know, I got to turn this around in a couple of days. What, what do you do? Well, we always start with um, the foundational protocol of the Jumpstart Bundle, specific supplements, mm -hmm. seven or eight, depending on in, in, in each individual. I like to meet with each new student. So we go over this so I know what they can and cannot do. Yeah. And then we go pretty aggressive with those. Mm -hmm. So we take a couple of weeks to tweak the dosages so they are as aggressive safely as they can. Mm -hmm. And then we basically, uh, you know, at that point, people are just like you, you know, I'm not going to open that. Uh, I'm not going to clear the kitchen sink. I can't even click on the text. So they need something simple without having to think. So we yes. just do that. You don't want to think because you can. You can. <laughs> you can. They just have to follow that, get the supplements. We tweak it. And then, and then we wait for a few weeks that that's all they do. So we start turning off, turning down the virus, cleaning the inflammation and the oxidative stress from the brain and you know, from the bloodstream slowly. So they start feeling better. And then we continue driving the, the food, the kitchen food, reforming that. Uh, a lot of simple tools there, because again, it has to be simple and delicious. And then yeah. we go after supplements again later. Once the kitchen is set, we go deeper into the supplement protocol. And then we go over the stress, the saying no. <laughs> Just say no. Cortisol, <laughs> you know, and then we go over sleep because also there's a lot of insomnia induced by the virus, the specific things to do. There's uh, like mapping all of these. We go into toxicity because there's particular environmental toxins that can turn on the virus on demand, like fireworks, mm -hmm. like every July. We just posted a couple of posts last week. Stay away from fireworks, burning forests, don't sit by the fire pit, sit away, you know, because dioxins. Why is that? The dioxins. It's a chemical that is created in, in these situations. Grilling as well, when you have smoke. Okay. If you inhale it, that's going to reactivate the disease. That's very well studied. And so mm. we always give a shout out every July. I did not know that. The virus is very predictable. There's no magic. It's not like the, the, the big message I want to say is there's nothing, there's nothing mysterious about this virus. It's just an opportunist. It's just mm -hmm. the virus. You can turn it off, turn it on. Dioxins, turn it on. Mycotoxins, turn it on. Wi-Fi technology turns it on. Heavy metals possibly turn them on. So heavy on. metals is something that I wanted to talk about because after I, I had a lot of lead um, when I got tested and then we did a chelation therapy and I also did a, a heavy metals diet for really strict for a few weeks and that was a game changer. Um, but explain how how that's related. Um, we don't we don't know there's some hypothesis uh, it seems that with this virus in particular maybe mercury in particular I don't know you may have a lot of you may have had a lot of exposure to lead in the oh, earlier house. in 70s uh, from the uh, first house I was in that was really old <laughs> 
chewing on lead chip <laughs> on lead paint chips or something. So the car and gasoline. Gasoline. That's true too. Yeah, yeah, that's what we what we carried from gasoline often. Mm. So um so this is what I want people to be aware of because you know when I first said in a Hammond years ago about dioxins and fireworks, um when I like sent sent out I, <laughs> The, the, the forests were burning. My husband was picking me up at the airport and in summer and we were driving in Seattle and it's like Mars. Everything is red, red hue. It's like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. So I, I remember in the car, he's driving, I'm doing a, a Facebook Live just out there. It's like, people, I just realized, stay away from the burning forest. You're going to reactivate. And I remember the first time people were coming out of the woods saying, now, I've been doing everything right. I was so distraught because I reactivated. I had no idea why. You know, your, your world collapses when you reactivate again mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. have that anxiety. What's next? I don't understand. It was very empowering for people to see, oh, I get it. Okay, that's what happens. Yeah. But you can turn it off. So one of my students, you know, she had a fire pit on a beach with friends. So she was wearing masks. She was taking her bundle on that day, full speed. She was sitting away from the wind. She, uh, she was, you know, put a mask on and she enjoyed it, was very aware of it, went home and maybe a little sniffle, but it's like game changer. So this is how we work with the virus. And this is how I want people to, to look at it, you know, put it in its place. Yeah. It's an opportunist. And it's, it's, um, and, and really it's, it's a lifestyle, even if you don't have these symptoms, um, the the way to live it you know just to be mindful to um reduce your stress and improve you know take time to do these things um you know as far as you know watching what you eat and it's it's not that complicated you know, it's very it's simple. not that complicated no very it's simple that, it's a it little bit like you know it's a little bit like exactly it's a little bit like engine engine light on in your car mm -hmm. You know, if it, by the time you get the virus, it's an engine light on saying, alerting you. By this time, there's really something off. You need to address it. Yeah. And it can be, you know, one thing I can say people don't realize. Number one, we walk with deficiencies, nutritional deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Plain, in plain sight, hysterically high percentage of people that are deficient in basic nutrients. Um, it's getting worse. You see up to 90, 80% of chronic illness is caused by basically nutrition, nutritional deficiencies. And if you look at studies, your, how aggressive your EBV is depends on your nutritional status. If you have one crappy meal, you turn it on. Yeah. You, your, your selenium level drops, you can turn it on. Mm -hmm. So it's like it really responds to nutritional status. And, and when people are stressed out, and I know you know that, but people may not know that when you are under stress, you are actually urinating a lot of these nutrients out. You're losing them. Mm -hmm. So you're not even retaining some of the nutrients you ate, even though you didn't eat enough because the produce doesn't have the nutrient density that it used to. If you eat organics, you have more. But I find that even organics these days, they don't taste what they are supposed to taste. So mm -hmm. we need bio what is it, biodynamic agriculture, but it's hard to find the produce there. So it's like, we really are nutrient depleted plus stress depletes those nutrients. Like I said, you urinate them out. So, so it's like an engine light. Do you have that? It means you have to look at your life and say, no, like you said, no. What is out of balance? It's a, it's a tough teacher, really. Like, it is. It, it, it's definitely um, a, a teacher of, if you're really looking at it in the right sense, it teaches you how you really should treat yourself and love yourself and take care of your vessel, um, vessel to get yeah. through the, and to get through this life. And, and um to be honest, I feel kind of blessed that I went through it because I have improved 
my relationship with myself. Yeah. Awesome. Um, you know, um, awesome. and it's, I, it's, and I want to stay this way, you know, so I yeah. know I have to continue to be vigilant in this kind of lifestyle, which is great. I mean, the things that you do, it's, it's more of living life than. Okay, so, so one thing I would caution because, um, you know, the words we use and you know that too, I don't like the word vigilant because you just want to have joy. Yeah. And joy comes from self-love. I can tell you the number one reason why people have chronic EBV, a wonderful community, you know, amazing people have chronic EBV. If you mm -hmm. dig deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, there's just one, one sentence I'll say, I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. You go all the way to childhood, all the way to trauma. There's something that stops people from having boundaries, saying no, having balanced life. It's this, it's the lack of belief that you are lovable, you are enough. Right? Right. Absolutely. Really, really deep stuff. We have yeah. a whole module about healing these parts because that's the healing. And that's what you do as well. Yeah, right. That's the deeper healing fundamental level mm -hmm. so I, I would just say i don't want people to, to think about vigilant being vigilant because vigilant means that something is gonna creep behind you and you have to be on your watch it's still out of uh, i would say if you if you just say with love is i'm just gonna enjoy having that love affair with myself and nurturing myself and cooking for myself and taking a walk and saying no enjoy rather than you know i have to be vigilant because it's like i have a new job i'm vigilant <laughs> like you know what another work you know job like no more job descriptions um well you just, have to know about. what what brought it on in the first place mm -hmm. and not let yourself fall back into those old habits that allowed you to uh, allow the virus to take hold you know like like not eating right or you know being around the fire too much or you know let it, allowing yourselves to be i mean sometimes you gotta like you were yeah. talking in your book about uh one of your ebb heroes that she had a lot of mold in her house mm -hmm. and we don't realize how much that can be a detriment to our health and stir up a lot of other things um but just being aware of it um, being aware yeah i like the word aware because awareness yeah, yeah. probably a better word but yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um but um so tell us um so what are some some things that if if they want to go i i really feel like maybe i need to know a little bit more about this um we've got the book and you've got the ebv help website uh what other uh tools and and resources do you have to offer yeah we have everything right now i mean i've worked and worked to set everything up so wherever people are on this journey they, they have something that we can offer basically so we have the quiz to get started we even have direct to consumer lab with the right test because nice. that's a yeah direct to consumer awesome lab local lab, lab draw and you get report electronically within 24 hours excellent excellent you know customer service they created probably you know, the, the the four antibodies i wanted it's like bulletproof so you don't have to struggle with doctors because people waste time and money trying to find somebody to test and then yeah. the tests are a mess it's like right so we have that on our website and then uh, if people are confused, they can always have clarity session with me. It's like a 30 minute one on one. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have our EBV recovery program. So if you love the book, that's like book on steroid, but it's all doing. It's all doing. We're just mm -hmm. doing. You know, forget about research, it's just doing and why and when and how. So um, it's kind of a 10 month process. Some people can do it faster. So we, it's huge. It has tons of resources. It's amazing. So we've been doing it for a few years now. Yeah. Uh, and we we recently revamped it because I missed the one on ones. People are coming into the program, but I didn't know them like one on one. So now every student has two one on ones with me. 
we have amazing group calls, we have a huge library. So it's like, you can be flat, horizontal, in bed, and just listening to those, to those calls, so you, and get inspired and empowered. Do you so, have any books on on uh, audio or anything that they can listen to? No, <laughs> no, that's too much to ask. <laughs> I wish, yeah, maybe one day, maybe someday. Um, I'd like to write another book, you know. But as and we and we do have like so we have that recovery, and then we have this beautiful VIP coaching, uh, very small groups. When we do the EBV recovery and alternate it with spiritual journey work that you do as well we go deeper into those areas uh, to really really for deep healing so we have we have those so we have all the spectrum and every two months we have transformational workshop which is live which is today that's like 47 bucks that's great that's it's great. wonderful it's about spirituality and emotions mm -hmm. so people start healing that part that is hurting to kind of release those and then we're going to do five day free trainings soon uh, every other month. And then we're doing free trainings on Facebook lives, 10, 15 minutes each every Wednesday, right there in our community. So we have a Dr. Kind's EBV community that is free, private. So that's great. I can't do any more. <laughs> I think we're doing. I, you know, you. <laughs> I, I, I hope that you have a lot of helpers. <laughs> I do have helpers. helpers, not enough, not enough, but I, I am ready to slow down a little bit. So, yeah, uh, but it's amazing. It's amazing seeing, you know, it's like the more you play the piano, the better you, you become on it. You, yeah. come, you become on it. The more I work with the community all these years, the more I see the miracles of healing and empowerment and, so you build that muscle, you know, people can be invincible and really build the core and they don't have to fear that virus anymore. They can live their lives and sometimes much better, just like in your case, you're just so much yeah. better yourself now than you were before. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's kind of like, okay, I, I am not only going back to the way I was before, I'm going you to better. go better, like create baseline is like here. elevated. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Like you, you, honoring yourself on a deeper level because you were serving and I, I have the same challenge you know when we serve we serve so much that we we get lost and we forgot about serving us and our well-being so no right and you know yeah. it, it, it really is all about being patient with yourself you know because I think that we if you are a doer and you come down with the the EBV and usually oh. whatever and whatever a virus that usually tags along because there's usually one one other one that's kind of comes in for the ride mine was Bartonella um then and, and you have you want to get back to what you were doing but you can't and so you just have to go like okay let's let's take our time it's okay you don't have to you know, I, I didn't know how long it was going to take. I didn't know if it was going to take six months, a year, two years, three years, five years. I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, but I, I just knew that I, I just had to get more energy. I had, I have things to do, but it, it will happen when it happens. But I just kept making little, you know, celebrations when, you know, one day I was looking at my kitchen floor and I'm like, oh, I, I want to go and actually clean it all and before it was like oh no I can't even how do people even clean you know I mean it was it was it was devastating it was yeah, it is yeah um so could you share one of your favorite quotes um to our listeners so I ask always ask my yes for your favorite quote so do you want one about EBV and one not about EBV sure Okay, so the one about EBV would be that the EBV is uh, treatable, reversible, and predictable. And the one that my observation as an immigrant living here since 1996 is just because something is common, it doesn't mean it's normal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So true. And uh, what is your happy hack? My happy hack currently 
Uh, there's two songs that I have on Spotify. One is I'm happier when I'm dancing and the other one is joyful. Super, super great songs. Or anytime, you know, Ringo Starr, you know, the Beatles. you have to move those hips or oh, Paul McCartney, you know, that music, music, I feel is the easiest for people to, when you are really uh, down to get into your authentic self and kind of, you know, the yeah, you know, physicality of joy. Music triggers lots of different things it, mm -hmm. and it triggers the times that you are happy in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, you know, sometimes you're Physical, like, oh, my, and yeah. Yeah. get out of your head. Yes, yes. So, uh, right. yeah, so I have a, I have a playlist uh, in Spotify, and uh, if I need to it pick me take up. myself out of a particular emotion, I just click, and yes, yeah, so that's that's an easy easy fix. Yeah, that uh, that's that's a good one. My I always like to watch stand up comedy. That's my fave. That's my go to when I just need to just laugh at life, and you know, yeah, it's a good one too. Laughing is a, a huge. Uh, you know, like a good belly laugh is very, very healing. Oh, I love these painful belly laughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to thank you so much for uh, coming on and explaining your book. I think it's definitely very valuable. Um, and in addition to all of the other resources you have with EBV help, that's where they can start is to go there and they can navigate to all your everything other. yes we have supplements there like we have our bundle there we have uh podcasted videos there we have like i mean everything all the programs that's <laughs> great even the even the the link to the book is there it's worth to go there because if you go through there uh we will send you two gifts very good gifts very good gifts i would say free as a thank you, if you go to, you know, click from our website to Amazon and then give us the receipt from Amazon mm -hmm. back on our website, then you're going to get those gifts. Oh, wow. Great. Very well, practical. I will have all that information in the show notes below. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll also put it, um, you know, probably right here, <laughs> uh, you know, so awesome. they... So they'll know to where to go. And that that's great. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't know about your website. I probably just got overwhelmed and didn't see it. I think you have it listed your book possibly, do you? Did you, you know, it's four years, it's four years ago. We just, I, I think we just launched that website at that time. It's probably yes. there, but right no. here on the very bottom. Oh, you can't see it. It's disappeared. Uh, but it is the very last thing on the back of this book. But yeah. um, yeah. You did I, great. You didn't need that. You, you got exactly <laughs> the support you needed. And that's perfect. You just did a great job. Well, you know, it is a very, um, it is a situation that can very overwhelm yourself and you have to simplify and you have to find a resource that can just, you know, like just hand it to you. Um, I was trying to figure it out and it was very overwhelming to try to figure it out. I mean, yeah. even though I was told this is what I have, yeah now we, what? yeah you know yeah my my goal is to figure it out so people don't have to do the heavy lifting you did so yeah. that part is all done no more no right. more people don't have to go anywhere you don't have to go to PubMed you don't have to go to groups you know you know just come to that website we'll support you all everything is there so amazing yeah, it's like amazing. hopefully the message is of hope it's the, there's sustainability oh, sure. in solutions. It's a it's a virus. You can turn it on and off. It's predictable. You can live a life. You don't have to get cancer. You don't have to get autoimmunity. You know, it's just uh, let's just take care of ourselves lovingly. Yeah, and you had um, in here in this book, and I had it tagged, and then I think that must have fallen off when I was trying to save it. But um, there it is. Your EBV Hero Manifesto. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. And it's right there. I have to get my You framed it before we had a Oh, call there you go. Look at it. It's right there. Can't read it from there, but um, okay. So it's um, who it's are on our we? website too. It's on the EBV Help website. 
you can pull it out there. We are, those, we are those with EBV who are on the way to healing from it. We are those who have already healed from EBV and are living our lives again. We are the proof. We are the families and loved ones of those with EBV upholding their dignity while they are on their way to recover. We are clinicians who refuse to settle and want the answers for those suffering with EBV right now. EBV heroes, we are a community. We connect with each other. We lift up and support one another, creating a global movement of hope and faith. We are dreamers. EBV has only fueled our resolve to follow the dreams and passions we once gave up. We help one another grow spiritually. We believe spiritual healing is as important as physical healing. And even when our bodies still hurt, our spirit can't be broken. We are on our way. And that's just a little bit of it. Um, but I mean, this it's great. You know, I mean, I, I feel like everybody should just be part of the community. Um, whether you have it or not, because you never know when it's going to come up, but it, it's a, it's, it's a great way to live now. Anyway, um, it, it puts you in a spot that makes you happier. You yeah. know? It yeah. does. Right. I mean, just yeah. the, the way you eat and it, cause I mean, having energy lifts your vibration, which gives you the energy to, to be happier, to love yourself more, to have that connection to, you know, your your intuition your your true self and and that's what it's all about yeah. um I so agree. so uh okay. i just thank you so much i mean you're just such an inspiration um i i was so tickled pink when you <laughs> agreed to be on the show i mean i i was just telling my everybody oh my gosh she's gonna be on my show <laughs> of course of course you invited me i'm here Yes. Yeah. We gotta, so. Yeah. We got to share that message. You have an amazing message. So I'm, I'm glad I'm part of your community with this message. Absolutely. I didn't your story. Well, thank you so much again for coming and um, we'll definitely love to have you on the show again. Um, yeah, sure. would love that. So, you know, especially just to share anybody's stories or uh, anything else that you want to share or anything that you've got going on. So it'll be my pleasure. Yeah. Let's do it again. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Create Happy Now podcast. Please be sure to subscribe. And if you are watching on YouTube, hit that notification bell. If you have a topic to suggest, leave a comment below. Catch the Create Happy Now podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, Podbean, Amazon Radio, and iHeartRadio. Check out other YouTube videos on the Create Happy Now YouTube channel. And if you want more, check down below for links to resources, courses, and events, or go to www.createhappynow.com.